Hello, Hofstra fans, and welcome to the WV Mason Coach Report with Seth Tierney, the head coach of Hofstra Men's Lacrosse. Good afternoon, Coach. How are you today? Doing great, Nick. Thanks for having me. No problem. Happy to have you on. Uh, let's get right into it. It was a it was a very convincing win over visiting Sacred Heart this past Saturday, twenty one to nine over the Pioneers. Uh, Matt Elder had probably the one of the best games of his Hofstra career with five assists and six points. Uh, Gerard Kane, Rookie of the Week for the CIA with, uh, after four goals. You know, looking back at the tape, uh, what can you say about the prize performance on Saturday? Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I want to get into that. I, I want to go off script a, a little bit, Nick, just to, uh, uh, I, I brought it up in the post game and I, I just want to bring it up on every, you know, channel or social media scenario that I have about the Howard University women's lacrosse team and yeah, the things that they went through. And I just wanted them to know. And for the people that don't watch maybe the post game show, but they watch your, your WB Mason show, just to let them know that the, the men's lacrosse team here at Hofstra are behind and with the, the Howard University women's lacrosse team that had some issues down at Presbyterian. I hope those uh, young men come forward uh, and, and face the music. Uh, that should that stuff should not be going on. And uh, Coach Silcott, um, her husband is a teammate of mine, which makes her a teammate of mine, which makes those girls teammates of ours. And we want to just make sure that we back them up. So uh, I, I appreciate you, you know, allowing me to say that because it's uh, it's important to our program. Um, of course. Of course. Hard, hard to tra hard to transition out of that, uh, which is much more important than uh, than a, than a lacrosse game or a single lacrosse game or anything along those lines. <laughs> but you know, for our fans out there, uh, we as a coaching staff, we were we were proud of the way our guys played. Uh, I think we fixed or we got better at some of the things that we weren't as sharp when we did play uh, Merrimack or certainly our uh, our scrimmage versus Quinnipiac. Um, so we, we did move uh, a little bit in a good direction there. Uh, we do have some injuries uh, and we have our toughest opponent to date coming in, which I know we'll talk about in a little bit, but Matt Elder, certainly proud of him, a uh, young man that's been on the scout team for a couple of years, uh, working hard, and then for him to have the ball on his stick, uh, you know, and, and making some good decisions, dodging hard, Gerard Kane, his first full lacrosse game uh, as a D Division One student athlete, uh, he got a little bit of time in our first game, but for him to, to go and, and play and start for him to put the ball away four times, uh, you know, there was some unselfishness on our offensive end. There was some communication uh, highlights on the defensive end. Um, you know, uh, playing another game has now opened up our eyes to a, a few more issues as we get, you know, as we go through this. And that's what that's why we coach. Let's find out what we're not doing great at and and let's work on it and, and create some type of solution. So we got back at it this week. Uh, you know, this week of practice, a little bit of a short week with the game on Friday. Um, there'll be some jockeying uh, in the lineup a little bit, and uh, we look forward to our next challenge. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to say you know, thank you for speaking out on that with everything that happened with uh, Howard at Presbyterian. You know, it, like you said, like that stuff shouldn't be happening today, whether in our sport or just in general. You know, and I think the lacrosse community's reaction to that has been nothing but overwhelming support for, you know, the players, the coaching staff and the program of Howard. So it's, yeah, there's no, no, yeah, no it, question. I appreciate, I appreciate your thoughts. And, and, and these are things that uh, I know Kyle Harrison has done an unbelievable job trying to move the needle to make things, you know, just a wonderful world for all of us. Uh, but like I said, you know, Brian Silcott's a teammate of mine, which, uh, you know, his wife then is a teammate of mine and, and, you know, I can go down the line, but we're all teammates and we all should be trying to eliminate uh, the bad in what's going on in the world today. Exactly. Uh, couldn't have, couldn't have said it better myself. I'm in complete agreement with you there, Seth. Um, you know, with kind of going back to the Sacred Heart game, one of the names that I wanted to highlight a bit was um, Griffin Turner. You know, he had a, he had a hat trick coming off the bench, uh, sophomore transfer from TCU, which competes at the club level, you know, the MCLA. You don't really see that kind of transition going from club to NCAA Division One. You know, what did you see from Griffin at his time at TCU and how, do, how has he made that transition? <laughs> yeah, Griffin's he's a wonderful person, a uh, hard worker. Um, he played, you know, in his high school days, he played actually in in front of uh, in front of Kyle Harrison. And, you know, I got a chance to coach Kyle years ago in a you know, and when I was at Hopkins and Kyle had called 
uh, on his behalf. So we did some research on him and, um, you know, Griffin decided to end up going to TCU for his first year uh, and then moved over to us and he took a chance on us and we took a chance on him. And when he, you know, when we got cleared, obviously through the pandemic, it's been a, not an easy path for him, um, but, but coming on board and, and he is, uh, he's very much in control of his game. Uh, he works hard. Uh, he understands the IQ part, part of it. Um, and for him to have three goals is uh, it's one of those stories that, that people read about. And uh, we're really thrilled for Griffin. His, his better days of lacrosse are still ahead of him. If he continues to work hard, he's going to have some smiles on his face after certain games. Absolutely. You know, and it, the goals that he scored were, were really good goals. You know, the rolling back from, from his uh, left to his right, going across the cage and just, you know, the, the top corner rips like they were. Yep. I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, what, what Turner can do moving forward, especially on Friday night. You know, you said yourself, it's the early season test against Navy. Uh, they're one and one on the year. They're coming off a 15 to five bounce back win over Merrimack, uh, Mercer, excuse me. Yep. Uh, you know, your USA lacrosse buddy, Joe Amplo, your former Hofstra staffer while you were, you know, starting out here under Donowski, he's leading the line. You know, what, uh, what can you say about the midshipmen coming into Friday night? Yeah, I mean, listen, they can play. There's no getting around. You want to talk about discipline. You want to talk about, you know, in great shape, strong, fast, you know, and discipline. That's what's coming in here on Friday night. On top of that is three Hofstra alums that are on their sideline. John Orson, Joe Amplo, and Blake Miller are, are three out of the four coaches that played here at Hofstra, graduated from here, all lacrosse guys. And, uh, and so that is a, you know, that's part of it as well. We've just asked our guys to stay above the noise, uh, uh, you know, let's let's focus on us. Let's watch and learn about our new mission versus N the Naval Academy. Uh, we know how hard they're going to play. Um, we know, uh, you know, the excitement of a of a Friday night game. Now, hopefully, the weather's good. You know, we we got really really fortunate uh, during the Sacred Heart game. The weather was wonderful. The crowd was great, and and so we're looking forward to it. And again, they, you know, we've got a bunch of guys out there. But you know, you had touched on it. You talk about Griffin Turner, you talk about Gerard Kane, you're going to talk about Rory Jones, you know, and you're going to talk about a bunch of young guys that um, don't have a whole lot of experience in Division One. So every time that we get a chance to put a uniform on and play, they're going to grow. And uh, and so we need to we need to keep, you know, keep that path of growth going as we start to move through our schedule and we get closer to, to conference time. Exactly. You know, the, the non-conference schedule is a way to find out a lot of things about your team in addition to playing some high quality opponents. And right. you know, what, what better way to find out things about the team than take it on Naval Academy? Should yep. Be, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a, a great contest regardless of the score. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So it'll be this Friday night at 6 p.m. hosting uh, Navy. Uh, live video will be available through Flow Live. Hofstra will also be providing live statistics and live audio through WRHU 88.7 FM. Find out everything you can on a Hofstra men's lacrosse and all of Hofstra athletics at GoHofstra.com. For head coach Seth Tierney, I'm Nick Capitos. Thank you for, again for joining us for the WV Mason Coaches Report.